appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 42. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. Is Hype is not hype. I'm not geeked up. Very, very special guest in the building for episode 42. Introduce yourself to the audience. Sherelle Hype, sis. Basically, our families are super duper tight. So we're, we're I'm his sister in that way. And Islamically, obviously. Copy that. Uh, for those who are watching the videos now, the videos are now available on the E Block Radio Network Mondays at 2. Uh, also, GFT Radio Network, Tuesdays at 2. We are Wednesdays on the Kickback app. That is 8 a.m. and 8 uh, p.m. Central Standard Time. Then we go Thursdays, WTNUPhilly.com. Fridays, the I Say Podcast Radio Network at 10 a.m. And the THC Radio Network at 10 a.m. on Saturdays. Sundays, we are open. We need a slot on the Sunday situation. We need something on the West Coast. But if you got something somewhere else, let me know. Get with me. Um, also, wristbands are available to be purchased uh you get a free wristband with any purchase you make from custom hustle jerseys custom hustle jerseys is my clothing line you design the whole situation yourself in and out of the country no problem we can get it there uh h2h cleaning is my cleaning company follow that on h2h cleaning on instagram and get with me no job is too big no job is too small okay episode 42 uh we're gonna do this one about why is the family not as important as it used to be there was a very big emphasis on family in the last generation, the generation that we grew up in, where you had to have those tight bonds and those tight relationships with your aunts, uncles, cousins, and things of that sort. Brothers and sisters, everybody tried to, you know, build that community. It takes a village is what we were always taught when we grew up. Now everybody's off in the corner doing their own thing. Why is that? How did we get there? Let's talk it out, sis. First off, am I clear? You can hear me. Everything straight on the technical side. Good. Take two. The so, audience didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> So, so obviously it's a lot of reasons, but I think the main reason, I just feel like a lot of people think there are a lot more pressing matters than family at this point. Um, I think family might've taken a step, a step back in importance because certain things have come to the forefront as being more important. Like people are stressing more now than before. Like, um, obviously with COVID and stuff like that, people lost their jobs, that kind of stuff. So a lot of times when people are focusing on that stuff or focusing on health stuff or just getting their mind right, that kind of stuff becomes less important. And everybody sort of, you know, stick to whatever is going on with themselves. I think that's like the main reason. I think it's that the Internet has kind of taught us that we are all kinds of important. That individually, mm-hmm. everything that's going on in our world is what's going on in the world. And that everybody needs to be paying attention to what we're doing, how we're doing it, and why we're doing it at all times. And that is a very big problem because if anything, coming out of being stuck in the house with one, if you didn't have nobody, you'd be stuck in the house by, the, by yourself, just stuck in the house with the kids, stuck in the house with your wife and your kids. Like it should have made you appreciate more having the brother, the cousin, the sister, whoever it is to reach out to and to be able to build those relationships and have those strong ties and those bonds. It should have made you appreciate those relationships even more once you didn't have them. Like once A lot of times it, it is that. A lot of times it yeah. is that. But also being in these, situ- these stringent situations during COVID also reveals who you don't have, who you thought you had in your corner. Because everybody's like struggling with something. So a lot of people are like, you know what? I thought you would be there when a certain situation would be going on and you wasn't. Now, you know, you at number 22 in line. A lot of people get to that point. That might be entitlement. That might be entitlement. And adults got real stuff to deal with. So you can't expect everybody to be there all the time. But we got them in time. That's why I said, though, everybody thinks whatever they going through is the most important Mm -hmm. thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Like One of them things that I might do, like, sometimes is I might just text somebody like, I love you. I'm like, well, why you say that? I can't just tell you I love you. It got to be something wrong. It got to be something going on. Like, what the fuck? Like, you never know what you never know what's going on. Trauma happen. bonds, man. Trauma bonds make you make you sus- suspicious of stuff you don't need to be suspicious of. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you never know what's going to happen. And this text message from me, I might I can go I can go today. And this text message from me, you might look back on this joint 15 years from now and still be like, damn, that was crazy. <laughs> like, uh, one of those things, like you're saying, like once we got stuck in the house and all of that, like this situation has been going on for years, though, where it was like 
people just you ain't speaking over nothing. Y'all mm-hmm. ain't talking over some dumb shit over who bought the greens the Thanksgiving or like. Who let the kids? You ain't never outside. say thank you. That's what you ain't never say thank you. I've been waiting for my thanks. <laughs> I'm on some dumb shit, like for real, like and it be twenty years and y'all ain't talked about nothing. And then when one of y'all ends up in a box in the front of a church or in front of a mad a masjid, y'all sit there and be like, it was all over nothing. And oh my god, I can't believe we lost all this time. And now you're heartbroken and devastated with I can't believe my cousin, my sister, and all of that. And it's like you ain't talked to this motherfucker in twenty five years. You yeah. them as a 15 year old, not a 35 year old. Like, yeah, and I don't know if this stuck in them being a kid and never got to know them being a grown man or a grown yeah. woman. Yeah, yeah, and I that what you said kind of makes cer- certain things come to mind. Like, you know, uh, one of my nephews passed, and I won't specify exact members, <laughs> exact family members, but they had they had a riff with another family member with a cousin, and when my nephew passed, my other nephew. Dealt, he he went through that. He went through that finally, like at the grave, breaking down in the worst way because it was a riff over nothing. And now your cousin really gone. And you can't, you know, you can't do anything about it. You can't talk to him. You can't text him or none of that. You can't even squash it. It's over. So that's that's definitely what happens. It makes you like, it, once it gets to that point of finality, because some people, like most people, not even some people, most people are scared to talk about death. Yeah. Most people are scared to have those real conversations with each other. So like once it happens, it's like a shock to the system. And especially like I said, you know, it's all over. You didn't say thank you to me mm. in 2003 and we ain't talked ever since. Or you can never get over the fact that this person is no longer your little brother or your little sister. Like he or she is a grown woman or a grown man with their own family responsibilities mm-hmm. and all of that type of time. And it's like we got to get over that. Like, man, for real, for real. Like, this is how our situation has gotten to where we at. Like, this is how we ended up having 500 bodies in Philly last year. Over 2,000 shootings. On, that's what I'm saying. This is how we're on pace to have more than 500 this year is we ain't talking to each other. We ain't communicating with each other. We're not establishing those relationships, building those. I don't know how to communicate with each other, okay? We are avoidant, ghosting, and everything else because we don't know how to address situations like that. Most of Most of the generations before us, was considered some of them were considered the silent generation because when stuff went on they didn't talk about it it was kind of you just move on whether it was pain whether it was somebody got violated in the family all that stuff was they were used to you be quiet you kind of get over how you get over it ain't no therapy it ain't none of that stuff so that's what was kind of passed down that's what that's what a lot of our generation is getting into and obviously the younger people they are definitely not using conflict resolution it's it's primarily avoided that's that's their that's their go-to now i definitely agree with you that uh to just push it down until the shit becomes a heart problem or high blood pressure yes and just have an aneurysm or some shit that was definitely something in the generation before us mm-hmm. the problem that i got now is we got these type of platforms and these type of situations where people talk mm-hmm. about these different things the stuff that happens and goes on the real stuff that happens and goes on inside of a family dynamic or uh we did an episode with shout out to my guys TJ and EJ. We did the episode about the male perspective after you had a first baby. Like people dive into these different things that yeah. it's like everybody's been thinking it, but nobody would say it type of things these days. So it's like at this point in time, these are the times that it should make you be like, I understand it more and I get it more and I understand that I need to put a little bit more effort into my family dynamic or into any relationships in general. Like shit, it could just be relationships with your friends. This was your best friend since forever, and y'all had a falling out about nothing. Like, yeah. who was you ain't give me no gas money type situations. Like, <laughs> people go through too much dumb shit about nothing. And then once, like I said, somebody's laying in a box, they go, you're so devastated, but you couldn't get over this shit. You couldn't swallow your pride enough to say you apologize and make that phone call or go visit them or go see them in the house or some shit. Like, why does it always have to be a tragic situation for you to finally just succumb to, all right, I know it's deeper than this. Yeah, but beside the fact it's real subjective, like it's really specific to each person because a lot of different, obviously, family dynamics, you got a whole lot of part, you got a whole lot of moving parts to different family dynamics. Some people, it was it's all love and support, but it might be a couple black sheep. Whereas other families, it was generations of neglect or generations of everybody being quiet, but it's some trauma. Like I feel like family caused much of the much of what we struggle with. Cause that's where we get everything from. That's what we that's how we feel about our bodies. That's where we get that from. What we think about God, what we think about um, struggling, how we think we should, whether or not we think we should 
to be married or, you know, handling family another way. Like a lot of what we get or struggle with come from family. So a lot of people feel resentment and they done push family back in importance because of stuff like that too. Like maybe you done struggled 10 years trying to get your aunt to, to talk to you like an adult. So you're done. So a lot of times like that might be where people are. Like we dealt with so much as a, as a society up to this point, people are tired. So when it comes to family, like you ain't no different. You getting thrown in a box too with everything else because you stress me out. Like family can hurt you the most because that's who you care about the most. So a lot of times it looks like, it looks weird that we treat family like strangers, but that might be who hurts you the most. So sometimes you put them to the back burner. See, this is what I'm saying. See, this is what this is what we try, try to get into here on the Hot Hustle Podcast. Let's hit those nerves. Uh, <laughs> your family is the ones who tell you you're too tall, you're too skinny, you're too fat, you're too this, you're too that. Mm-hmm. But also, if your family doesn't do that, then you go out into the world and get the shock of your life when you mm. find out your ass was too tall, too skinny, mm. too fat. Or you too wasn't that, that smart. Or you ain't yeah, copy. <laughs> like, wasn't that. that. They you don't pump you up the whole time in your family. You really ain't nothing compared to people you outside with. But that's but that's what your family is there to do. Your family is there to protect you and and supply you with the shit that you need in any situation, whether they be broken or negative. Broken people are bringing up other people. That's not going to work. See, that's different. Now, if you're talking a toxic parent who is just always belittling you, demeaning you, and putting you down no matter what it is that you do, that's a different situation. No, bro- no, I'm saying broken- everybody got their thing. No, that's what I'm saying. But if you're talking a broken parent, or you can have a broken parent or broken uh, sibling where broken people just create shattered glass because they just turn, they create little damaged babies and have little, like, yes. yeah, you can, you can do that. <laughs> where yes okay this motherfucker is negative and he's always been this way <laughs> she is negative and has always been this way like your mom could be the worst person in the world which i mean everybody's situation is different somebody might have the yeah. best mom in the world some people might have the worst person ever she had you out here doing some of the wrong shit right so <laughs> yeah, copy if we're not talking about them type situations but even if your situation is that there had to be a, a cousin whether it was an older cousin a cousin of your age it had to be some type of uh importance it had to be something that makes this person different because they are your family this person was put into your life for a reason this person is here to help you along with something like whether it be teaching you something or whether it be just you teaching them something like sometimes it's not it's not always about you sometimes it's about the other person like and that's just the bottom line like we uh pull the curtain back a little bit when you was going in the hospital and had a baby, I'm like, I would rather go in there with you and not be able to go home with my family because I would rather go in here with you than you be in here by yourself. Yeah. And you literally was like, as being, I'm the youngest of six. My oldest sister is a little over 50. Child, don't have me trying to keep count of the ages. But anyway, she's a little over 50. I'm the youngest of six. However, you were who I put on my paperwork for. If I die, go to him to find out what I want done. You know what I mean? So it's it you you gotta you gotta nourish it, but we cultivated our relationship since we was kids. We never like dropped the ends and kind of left it there and thought it was just gonna pick up on its own. We still kept them ties. If so, if it was something we had to hash out, you know, if I'm talking a little too loud, I'm getting a little rowdy, acting a little Gemini like, you might be like, sis, first of all, hold up, why are you yelling? All I'm doing is saying <laughs> you gotta be able to do that. You gotta be able to you have to place that importance on those relationships. Right. If you, treat, if you treat your relationship with your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, just like the nigga that you went to school mm. with, whoever he was your best friend in third grade or whatever, if you treat those relationships like they can come and go just like that, then that's how we end up in these fucked up situations. That's how we got here. Yeah. We never I, treated this relationship as though it was something that it, w- it didn't have any value or didn't have any weight on it. Right. There was always something like that I would tell, like, listen, if you go through my text messages, you see a message from Rel, it might just say, hey, I love you. Mm-hmm. And you could look at that the wrong way if you're just going through somebody's phone and mm-hmm. you don't know who this is. Like, mm-hmm. But it's like, it is nothing malicious, nothing like that at all, Like, because it wouldn't be that type of situation. But a lot of people come from fucked up situations where they don't know how to read these different situations. So they automatically go to that. Like, it was a... I just think about if how my got, mom always talk about that. Toxic, if you had a toxic parent, though, I can see how you ended up thinking like thinking that. Thinking like that. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is what was normalized to you. Yeah. So 
speaking of like normalcy, I I'm not, let's make it clear that I'm not talking about my mother being toxic. Let's make that very clear. Be. I'm but <laughs> what I'm mentioning of her is my mother is a very anxious soul. She's very anxious. Everything is worry. Everything. So she'll run down how 15 things can go wrong if you tell her what a what a plan is that you're doing, just because that's just how motherly she is. But that's what I grew up in. So I'm an anxious soul. And and little, I'm I'm about to get kind of scientific, but you know, I'm kind of a nerd in that way. Like mothers, when we carry our babies, the cortisol, the stress hormone, get excreted in your blood and transferred to your baby. So you being an anxious person can make your baby an anxious person. So literally getting that from my mother, that was normalcy in our household. Her being anxious, her being worried about things. I thought that was the way to be, like to always be concerned about certain things. So I could obviously couldn't turn that off living like that for three decades of life. I couldn't turn that off just because I was pregnant and I knew that that was going to go to my baby. It still happened. So my baby is an anxious child. So it's again, it's, it is about what's normal to you, what's around you that you pick up and you're, you know, putting out into the world. That's definitely one the worst. One of the worst things to have is, uh, I guess you could call it like a personality trait. Or to have mm. something inside of you that you like, I wish that I didn't. It, this is what's right. I, I try to call it the burden of knowledge. Mm. <laughs> Once you know, you have the burden of doing better. If this mm. person does not know any better and they just been doing this shit the wrong way forever, they have the excuse of ignorance. Yeah. You have the burden of knowledge and it's like, <laughs> I know I'm too fucking caring and then I'm going to continue to call and check in on this person. And this other person doesn't give a fuck, and they're never going to do it. Brother, you the wise. Ignorance. You're so <laughs> wise. The burden of knowledge. I love it. Me having the burden of knowledge goes, I know that I can't let Rel go to this hospital by herself. Mm. Me having the burden of knowledge gets me to go, all right, let me call these four or five people. Like, once the shit started last year, let me call these four or five people just to check in, just to say, hey, yo, y'all good over there. Let me send a text message or something. Because you know that's the right thing to do. Because you know it's the right thing to do. But this other motherfucker who was put in a situation where you never got that type of thing or that type of, you never saw it. You never even crosses your mind to go, let me text my brother to see if they good. down. Like, your brother moved to Tennessee. You need to be checking in on them to make sure shit is good down there because you don't really have that strong of a relationship with those nieces, those nephews, or that sibling because they're in a totally different space. But you got to have it in your mind and go, let me text them. Let me check in with them. Let me just make sure everything's good. Like, I got people all over the country where, damn, they having a hurricane down there. Yo, let me send out a text and make sure niggas is good. Yo, I know you said your son was graduating today. Tell him congratulations from home. Like, different situations where you need to be trying not to have you be so important that you forget about everybody else. Yeah, I I, I, I definitely see... um... I definitely see that. I definitely see a lot of that and a whole lot of dynamics with different people um, and family, like even with a spouse, that very thing that you mentioned, I experienced, like, I don't think he came from checking on people types, you know, I don't think he came from that. Whereas me, I'm coming from an anxious mother. So she's always checking on people. So that's just a norm to me. And I'm just like, why would you go this amount of time not checking in about certain things? Like what? Like, so you just, you know, clearly you don't care. That's, that's where I, that's where my mind would go at, but that's, that might not be it. But you <laughs> might not have ever been equipped with those skills to handle this problem. Copy. Like, wow. I, come from, I come from the mom that everybody calls. Yeah. From, I come from the dad who was <laughs> the head of the family. So for me, it's very easy for me to step into that, that role and to fill those shoes because yeah. it's like, okay, after a certain point, it's not on them to help. Mm. raise and bring up my generation that's on one of mm. us to step up into that situation somebody has to be the leader and if you know if you have to be equipped to lead though you can't just want to lead because it's the cool thing to do and get to say that you're the leader you have to have the yeah. skills to be able to get people to follow what it is that you're trying to tell them and as long as you're trying to get them to do some beneficial shit for us not for you then mm. they should go with whatever it is that you're trying to tell them i, I feel like i feel like going back to what you were talking about that social media is reinforcing the stuff that we want to do, but we always thought was wrong. Like constantly caring about ourselves. Like basically social media is telling you like, like, you know, it's about you. Like it's your world. So 
or your or them followers make you think it's about you for real because they're the first ones responding to when you post something or something like that. And I feel like a lot of people are not putting the work in to build in family relationships or foundations and stuff or or repairing foundations. And I feel like they're looking at families as like a source of issues and not a solution for happiness. Because that's what everybody's trying to get. Everybody's trying to get some gratification, some happiness. I don't feel like dealing with no stress. And if it ain't all that, like they don't, they don't want to put nothing into it. I just feel like their lack of lack of effort is the thing nowadays. That's what, even with even with trying to get success. I, I feel like they don't even respect people who had certain years in, in, in different industries because they can get success so fast. So it's like, I don't even have to put in all of that work. So I'm not doing that with family either. And the crazy thing is success is relative. And that is an episode that we will be doing in a couple mm. of weeks here on How to Hustle Podcast, because success looks different for all, looks different for all mm. of us. Um, yeah. Because especially like you saying with the follower situation and all of that, again, that's caught up in you. You're mm. only caring about who's wrapped up into what you got going on and what you're doing is the people who's following mm. you. And the sad part about that is you can pay for these followers. Nigga got 12,000 followers and six likes on a picture. There's no way that that equates. Like, there's no way that 12,000 people. And it ain't genuine. That's what I'm saying. There's no way that 12,000 people care about what you're doing if only six of them like it. <laughs> like, so no. people get so caught up into, again, this bullshit, the bullshit of the internet where yeah. it's trying to def- is you let it define who you are because you have no idea who you are but it mm. goes back to again what did what you, you got from family with? yeah what did you get from your family what are those relationships like like if you meet a dude who doesn't have a strong relationship with his mom how do you think that's gonna work out for y'all mm. you meet a really yeah. a girl who has a fucked up relationship with her dad how is that yeah. gonna work out for y'all like mm-hmm. you have to look at those family ties like everybody knows like once you get to the cookout, you end up connecting with this one cousin over here. And what is this one cousin going to tell you? Yeah. You know, they going to tell you like, oh, no, she ain't shit. And she used to do this, that, and whatever. Yes. He ain't shit. And he used to do this, that, and whatever. Like, Because it's cliques and families too, man. It's cliques and families too. But wow. that's, that's I, I definitely think that um, that's another piece. Again, like I said, with, with, the, with the social media piece, like in the follower, some of that is, what people get from that a lot of times is like, finally, finally, somebody see me. Finally, somebody saying yes to what I'm putting out into the world. Not, you know, that's a stupid idea or you ain't going to be successful with that. Or how you think you're going to do that? Or you don't even have this. So if, if somebody, even if it's superficial, I think it was, I think it was a, it was a T.I. song where he mentioned that <laughs> he was talking about some, whoever he was with in high school. Like, even if I know it ain't real love, like she's willing to accept it. Because it's like, finally, I can feel something that's not dread, you know, or depression or having me second guess, you know, what my worth is. So they'll they'll take that. Before we switch up the topic here, um, I will say this. It's good to have positive reinforcement, but you also have to have the negative there, too, because you have to be realistic about the situation. Everything that you're trying to do and aspiring to do is not going to work out. Yeah, <laughs> like everything's not a good idea. Just because five people are telling you, man, that sounds great, doesn't really mean it's a great idea. Did you think it out? Did you map it out? Or did you just do it? That's the thing about like a podcast, for example. Anybody with a cell phone and Wi-Fi can do a podcast. Like mm-hmm. you could go on an app and start your shit and be everywhere tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I when I decided to do how to hustle, I planned that from August to uh February. Mm-hmm. because you have to structure it and have it organized and put it in a way that it's going to work out for you. You can't just go with, oh, these five people agree with what I'm saying, so I'm not going to pay attention to these two people who are mm-hmm. telling me that this shit might not work. And it is, Not even that they're telling you it might not work. They're telling you that you need to do this, that, and whatever to line it up and make sure that it's done the right way. And if all you're hearing is, nope, you're not just flat supporting it with all uh, yes, you're not just flat out telling me that everything that I'm thinking is the greatest ideas of all time. So I ain't even fucking with you. You don't need to come around. Clearly, so yeah. Need, like, <laughs> yo, niggas would be like, I ain't fucking with you because you ain't like my last twelve pictures on Instagram. Like, <laughs> I unfollowed you. Like, all right, all right <laughs> um, I need you to stop. <laughs> all right, now let's talk a little bit about what you got going on. Uh, it's one thing I always said. Yo, Gotti had the song, uh, the Five Star Chick song. 
He said she do. She went to real estate school. She made her on my side. Went to school to practice law. I need her on my side. And don't do me like that. You, is your guy shooting at you on this song? What's going on here? Do I need to don't slide do me like down that. and see what's going on with this nigga? Because this sounds like he's cracking on you. He shot at because Angelo. First on the of all, yeah, man. I mean that was that was my previous life, man. Cosmetology and salons had a couple salons, but. That was my previous life, you know. I'm saying, I'm like, he read the whole rundown right there. <laughs> All he was missing was a keymar. Chow, they ain't putting that on there. Um, they can't add a twerk with a keymar. But um, <laughs> but yeah, so basically Sherelle Robinson Enterprises, that's it. I don't mean for it to sound like I'm self-indulged. However, um, I need my coins to be under my name. But um, so that's basically what it is, S-R-E-L-L-C. It's really consultant, consultant with a couple of divisions under it. So Main part real estate, like you said, I've been an agent for almost 13 years now. Um, dealing with some clients now, my headaches, but my babies. Um, but yeah, but mainly worked so on the on the seller side, uh, dealing a lot with sellers. And I'm looking for investors. I want people who want to invest in real estate, who want to learn about real estate, so I can get you guys into, you know, whatever the next level is in your life. Um, that's basically what I'm looking for. But yeah, for the most part, um, the consultant with on that side and consulting with um, business operations. A lot of people, like you said, they got business ideas, but they don't know a damn thing about operations or customer service or marketing or finances or keeping their business open, child. They don't really know it. So it's almost like you can have a manager without paying a salary. Um, that's one of the divisions. One of the other divisions is um, paralegal services. I'm a paralegal too. Um, so that's under that as well, but it's Sherelle makes you money.com. So S H E R E L L makes you money.com and real estate is Sherelle sold it.com. This is a problem though, like you just said about the businesses. People don't even know it's not even that you're fucking up the business, which again goes back to you only wanting to have people around you who are just yes men. Mm. People yeah. don't even know the questions to ask mm. or the steps that you need to go through to make your business successful. And I got e-courses that'll take you through that. I got e-courses and everything. You have open and all of that to go with this business. Yeah. Like people just jump out the jet doing shit without having the proper steps taken. And and I found out a lot of people really don't know. They just have the idea because I done made, I probably, I don't know how many LLCs I developed this summer. So many people had me developing their LLCs and they're like, don't have their EIN, don't have the commercial activity license, don't have a bank account open. Like literally don't know. So now you know where you can go <laughs> to get the help and that's, set it up right. That's because it just sounds cool to say I got Yes, say I'm a CEO. Yes, hey. don't know nothing. And you got to pay taxes and don't know nothing about taxes. Yeah, you can get all that. You can get all that from my side and make sure, you know, you're building something, not just constantly working and not getting nothing. Working and sleeping. This is the fucked up part. It is one, that's my whole life is working and sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> That this wasn't a chat, bro. I love you. I mean, hey, listen, I, I love it. Our people ask you the hardest work. You one of the hardest working people I know. Top, top three hardest working people I, I know, man. I mean, people tell me all the time, "What you been doing, bro? Work always, busy always." I ain't complaining. Triples. Just what it is. Triples, quadruples, you know. Triples in business. Um, <laughs> funny that you said this because this is how this is how shit, like I said, we grew up together. Uh, mm. How to hustle enterprises is the name of of my. Oh, uh -uh. uh, uh. <laughs> First of all, I, I don't like it. We got to talk after this. I don't <laughs> like what's going on. Company. It ain't and smelling good to me over here. It's not smelling good. <laughs> in the same way that you just was breaking it down about how No, you not it. divisions. How, yeah, we got to yeah. talk. We got I don't like it. Uh -huh. Like what it's looking like, bro. I don't like <laughs> it. Like you was just saying, though, like, I forgot about this in my own rundown. I always got too much going on. You just was saying, like, the breakdown of this marketing and the promotions and how do you do this and that. That's how to hustle seminars. I'm doing how like, to hustle on, seminars. Uh, put, me the the put me on the put me on the payroll. Give me a give me a give me a uh, W nine. I'll be a contractor. One of the speakers. You know I'm saying, but you bring see, something extra. Me personally, because I know I didn't get a chance to get all my ducks in a row yet. I didn't just go file some shit just to say I filed it. You know, you got to make sure it's done right. You got to make sure you connect with the right people. You got to understand that you don't know everything. Yes. Somebody is in the field. Like, shout out to my man, Ro. Shout out to CEO Ro. The cleaning company situation with H2H Cleaning. Ro had his own company for years. 
So yeah, I gotta lean on Ro to ask Ro about different things and different ways to move in that because he know he been doing it. Yes, because the- some people don't get no information. But not even don't have the information. A lot of people will be have too much of an ego and again thinking that you're too important to even ask your man. This is my brother of 30 years. Like people that have too much pride to ask their man or their sister, yo, put me on the game. Show me how to do this shit the right way. They'd rather fuck it up, do it the wrong way, and then just brother, say, that's what they do. That's what they do with real estate people when they realize how much like intimate information I need, finances, credit score. They like, oh no, I ain't showing her that. But who am I? Like I'm I'm like you. Like I, I just need the information. I'm not getting it to put it on Instagram and say, "Look, what this this person got a 300 credit." I'm not doing that. Oh, Instagram at real estate dot rel. Yeah, we just getting it. But yeah, like they be. That's how they act. I got you. I was about to drop that down right there for you. That's how they act, though. (laughs) (laughs) Um. All right. So then. Uh, we're coming up on a half hour. You know, this is the podcast yeah. drive through. We like to get you in and get you out. Yes. Uh, so give us, uh, give us all the tags and handles right now before we go. I have them all in the description and all of that, but give them out. Give them saying for the folks that are listening who don't read. You know so I'm not going to give every single division. I'm gonna do at real estate dot rail, and all of the other ones will be in that bio. So will my websites, but my main websites are. Sherelle sold it.com and that's S H E R E L L and Sherelle makes you money.com. So real estate. And those are the two websites, but they're all in the bio anyway. Notice that she said websites with an S like copy. I understood the game that was there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Don't shake me. But, um, shout out to my sister. She was probably the second person behind my wife. Maybe the third that I told even that I was going to do a podcast on my own. Uh, she was one of the people encouraging it the whole time that you could do this shit by yourself. So I thank you. I appreciate that. And I love you. And I have no problem Anymore. admitting that and saying that to the world because this is my sister. And yes, I will go to jail about her. So <laughs> when I post these pictures about her this week, don't be DMing me. Because now I had some oh, niggas goodness. DMing about, you know what I'm saying, a couple of chicks on these pictures. Don't bring my <laughs> sister on here. Don't bring my sister on here. Don't bring your wife. I don't care how close, close it is. We was looking at bringing her on an episode. Oh, it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> I appreciate y'all hitting the button. That's episode 42. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.